Welcome back everyone, Mike McConville here again for String Tech Workstation, Stratford, Ontario, Canada. So this is a fret light Stratocaster copy and as the whole fingerboard kind of lights up. It basically maps out different scales and chords, etc, etc. All of those bells and whistles don't mean much if, you if the thing doesn't play in tune. So the frets were dressed and I could see that it was leveled at the top end, but these top frets up here, and this is a problem with the CNC machine, they basically just chop off the crown. Although they were almost level, not quite level, I corrected it by hand, those machines don't recrown the frets properly. So the frets up here were all squared off. So they were recrowned, polished, now the frets are immaculate. And I do have my self-adjusting radius gates. We're just getting ready to uh, tune this up, do the final intonation for 10 to 46 strings at concert pitch. Here is this 339 that was in that last video. Uh, I did end up cutting a new compensated nut. I did that first one about 11 years ago. So there's the new nut, 10 to 46 concert pitch, 24 and 5 8 inch scale. And this one is done, ready to go, perfectly in tune and we'll get this back to dawn either today or tomorrow. Cheers. So we've got our self-adjusting radius gauge in there, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to wind up these center four saddles and get them out of the way. This foam is not strong enough to lift the strings up, and that's what we want. So I've adjusted the two outside strings. These middle four strings are not touching. Now that I've set the action between the sixth and the first string, now I'm just dropping that down until it just kisses that radius gauge. I can see the shadow of the string and the light under the string as I drop that down. So now we have a perfect match to our fingerboard radius. Okay, so I brought you in closer because I want to show you what's happening. The bottom edge of that saddle is actually hitting the head of this screw which is protruding up above the level of the casting floor. So this is what I had to do to, to be able to get that saddle to move back uh, so we had enough travel in that saddle to be able to intonate the guitar. So what was happening is as I pulled the saddle back it ended up tipping because it was sort of popping up onto the head of that screw. It's just one more example of the whole re-engineering thing that happens you know, they put so much work into this guitar, lighten up the fingerboard and, you know, loaded with electronics and you plug it in, you can use your iPhone. They went to all this trouble to do all the spectacular engineering, lighting up the fingerboard to give you sort of paint by number scale positions and chords and everything else. And one of the most fundamental things, being able to tune the guitar and adjust the action, was completely overlooked. Okay, so we're going to try that one more time and see if we get enough travel to bring that saddle back far enough to be able to intonate the guitar. One good thing about taking that out is I did actually put a drop of oil on and it's definitely moving a lot better now. Okay, so now I've pulled it back and it's not tipping up because I hit that underside corner on the disc sander. Well, I can see how far back I had to move that low E to get it to intonate. I'm not going to mess around here. That A string saddle's got two screw heads to contend with. So these three saddles have two screw heads each on the bottom of that casting that they're going to basically bump up against. All three of these are coming out and I'll skim that back edge so that it'll allow us enough travel to intonate the guitar. Hopefully I've canted that enough to buy us what we need to be able to pull that saddle back enough to intonate. So I'm doing a basic kind of visual check first. Take the opportunity to put a little drop of oil on there. So I've got that much travel without that thing being displaced by the uh, protruding heads of the screws on the casting there. So let's tune this up. See what we've got. Okay I can live with that. 
this corner here is starting to lift a little bit because it's touching that screw. So well, your average rookie would be having a real hard time with this one. Okay, out it comes. See how we fare with that. Okay, so that's how far we've come back now. Let's try that. Good. That's got it. I think with this G string, I know it's going to be back further than the D, so we're not going to mess around with that. We'll camp that bottom half right away. We'll give that a little drop of oil, too. I know that that's coming past the D-string. How far back we can come, we're going to see in a second. Oh, that's good. That's actually flat, so it's got to come forward. Perfect. These have been moved so much that we'll have to redo the radius. Not a big deal. Now, we may get lucky with the B-string because it doesn't have to come back quite so far. But we'll find out in a second. Okay, so that is... You watch as I pull this back. See, see this back end lifting? See how it lifts up? It's hitting the ends of those screws. <laughs> it's got to come out too. Oh man. So you can see once again how much I had to cant off the underside of that back edge to get this thing to line up, get the intonation to line up. So we should have plenty of travel on that now. I'll just give that a little, little drop of oil. That's good, it's a little bit flat. It's gotta come forward. So for that first string, yeah, it's gotta come back. I'm not taking any chances with this. I'll just go ahead and Camp that saddle too. So there you go. All six saddles <coughs> needed to be slightly re-engineered in order for this guitar to play anywhere close to being in tune. One more time. Canted the bottom of that saddle to allow that uh, adjustment to move back far enough to intonate the guitar. Another little drop of oil. Good, it's flat. These three saddles all need to move forward a little bit. That's a good thing. So now we can intonate this guitar for the first time since it was manufactured. Okay, we're going back to our self-adjusting radius gauge. The two outside strings are good. I like where they are. So I'm going to, so I'm going to raise those middle four strings up out of the way and then I'll drop them down until they just kiss that radius gauge and then we know we're a perfect match to our fingerboard radius. So this string and this string are touching. It's the middle four strings. I've raised them up so that they're not touching. Now I'm going to back them off and bring them down until they just barely touch that gauge without actually pushing it down. All right, it's a done deal. Perfectly radius, perfectly in tune. Now for the first time since this guitar was made, it's actually in tune. The sad thing in this is every model of this guitar is going to have the same problem. This is a production issue. There's never one mistake in a production. So unfortunately, there's going to be a lot of people out there a lot of people out there with this guitar that are probably blaming themselves. Why am I always out of tune?
yeah, so I kind of looped that progression. And I'll, let me grab a pick here. So I'll just blow over that progression and kind of fleck the pickups around. I'll let you hear this guitar. Thank you. 